How's everybody doing? Woo! I'm coming to you today from St. Augustine, Florida. Yesterday, I was the keynote speaker for One Coast Bar Camp. They had 1,250 people register for that event in 65 minutes. It's sold out in an hour. They had 70 sponsors. Uh, they actually had more than 1,250 people in attendance. And it was a magical Friday to a magical week. I started the week off in, where was I, Fort Worth with ASI, the Advertising Specialty Institute, an organization I've been working for for nine years. It is the only company that I work for outside of the world of real estate. They are a 70-year-old promotional products company. They have over 400 employees. However, I don't train their employees. I train their distributors. They have uh, well over 10,000 distributors, <laughs> um, tens of thousands of distributors. And here's what I took from that. I taught my first uh, AI keynote to that organization along with one of the owners of the Cowboys and the keynote speaker they had the week before me was A-Rod. But the 90-year founder wants to bring me in to train the company on AI and how they can leverage it in order to grow. So that blew my head back. I then came home, drove down to Bloomington for Illinois Realtors Winter Meetings, I did a keynote on the American Dream, which is a program being rolled out by the National Association of Realtors. <clears throat> and I had the opportunity to share uh, my family's story about home ownership. My great grandfather owned a house in Indianola, Mississippi. He bought it back in 1934. So I got to tell his story. And then I also got to tell on the other side of my family, my maternal side, how my great grandmother purchased a building in the 1950s, owning a paper stand. My great grandfather sold popcorn because he was a quarterman uh, who had been injured on the railroad, and they raised six kids and sent them to college with my great grandmother selling newspapers. So uh, I had to tap into myself and not get emotional. And telling the stories of home ownership, especially of people of color dating back to that time when it was virtually impossible and the sacrifices they had to make. And I only knew the sacrifices because as a kid growing up in a four generation household, I was ear hustling all the freaking time. So I'm, I'm minding everybody's business, okay? Um, so it has been a magical week. AC is not here with us this morning because AC is attending Traffic Sales Profit. It is the organization that I attended their event pre-pandemic, which is how I was able to publish 30 books since then. So she is so freaking excited. She has been texting me. We have a planning meeting on Tuesday about what we're going to bring new, what we're pivoting, what we're changing. Uh, so I will tell you, it's only going to get better. So guys, I did go back and I reviewed your questions for today, baby, y'all like me up to date. Um, the, the group coaching questions are fabulous. I was a little shocked there wasn't any AI questions in there. Uh, what I will tell you, I know that some of you are having issues with logging on to openai.com. I want you to always think about your Chrome browser extensions, especially the one called Merlin, M-E-R-L-I-N. Uh, when we do our monthly masterclass, I will show you how to leverage that too. Baby AI is hot right now. Um, it is, thank you. It is the hottest thing since Hootsuite or a sliced bread. If you want to take it back even farther. So we're going to go on and start diving into uh, all of our questions for today because you guys, uh, Hmm. I'm, I'm not going to get emotional, but y'all had some good questions uh, for today. So the first question is, good day. I use PDF Escape to create a fillable um, that worked. When I attempted to right-click it after downloading it to Dropbox, I get a URL. I will tell you there is something going on with PDF Escape. 
uh, since they updated the platform, it is not working well for me. I am going to reach out to them uh, to see what is going on, but they are having more than one error. I have not been able to use it to do a fillable form since the update to the platform, which I think has occurred in the last 60 days. So with PDF Escape, if you are having issues, you are not alone. There is something going on with the interface itself. And it might be the fact that they're trying to move everybody to some form of paid version. There is a tool called Tiny Wow, T-I-N-Y-W-O-W. I'm actually going to write these down and I'll come back and post them in the link. And AC is not here, but Tiny Wow. Um, that also has a PDF fillable tool. I believe Tiny Wow is based off of AI, but there are multiple tools inside of Tiny Wow. And actually, let me go over here right now. Let me click on this link for you guys and let me find it. So it's tinywow.com. No need in me coming back posting this later. <laughs> giving myself more work to do. So I'm going to come and drop uh, tiny wow down into the chat. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much, Sherry. Appreciate that. Drop that link down for you. Tiny wow. When you go over tiny wow, anything, it's a lot of automations. Taking one thing and doing something else with it. But let's come on over here and do screen share. I was a little leery because I'm in a hotel on a Wi Fi. And sometimes, you know, this stuff doesn't work the way it's supposed to. So let me come over here. All right. We're going to go to Tiny Wow. So it is an AI tool. I thought it was. It's a free AI tool. And with this tool, they have PDF tools, image tools, video tools, AI write tools. So let's say that we were to, there are 45 tools inside of the PDF tool that will solve any of your PDF uh, problems. Now, this is what I want you to think about with this. And this is not a <laughs> group coaching question. When I think about Tiny Wow, there's a person who took OpenAI to build this site. They're making this site available for free to the public because they're making money off of ads, period. So it is very possible that based on the amount of people who come to use this tool for free, that based on the ad space at the bottom, this could be a million dollar website and they're not charging the public. What I want you to think about, right, is what can you create with the AI that will solve real estate professionals problems that people will come and use the tool consistently for you to get people to play you to place their ads. Just want to throw that out there, okay? Because that's exactly what's going on with this too. And I'm going to make it available for you. But if a million people come over here um, every single month, now they have the ability to earn money off of the, those ads. So you can merge PDF. You can take a PDF and turn it into a photo. You can edit a PDF. You can take a JPEG and turn it into a PDF. You can compress your PDFs. You can split a PDF. So you got a two-page PDF. You want it to be uh, two. You, you have a two-page PDF and you want it to be two separate PDFs. You get to do that. So Tiny Wow is the tool in which you would use. I would recommend that you bookmark that tool um, because it is a fabulous tool. What is the difference between boosting on IG or Facebook? Do they both syndicate to each other? Is one better than the other? So when you boost, you have the ability to boost to one or both. Meta is the parent company of Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, and WhatsApp. If you are boosting, you could technically boost to all four locations. What I am going to say is contingent upon who your target audience is would dictate if you want to boost to Instagram or do you want to boost to Facebook? 
One is not specifically better than the other. The question is, where is your target audience? And you want to make sure that you're boosting to your correct audience. So you could do just one platform or under meta, you could do four platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, and WhatsApp. Okay. Um, and so it, it, it's, it's essentially no difference. The question is, I would not boost to a platform where my audience or my preferred audience isn't spending their time. And let me clarify that. It's not even where they spend their time. For me, it's where they're willing to tell their business. So I want to spend time where people are willing to share their business. So then I can add that information to my customer relationship management system, tag them and reach out to them in the future. So I thought that was a good question. The next one is, let me just start highlighting these. What is the best way to be consistent in your opinion? Hmm. So when I start thinking about what has worked for me and being consistent, um, for me, it is one, it must be on your calendar. It must be on your calendar. If it is not on your calendar, the likelihood is it is not going to occur. So one thing I wanted to do, um, when I think about my life, I live my life, God, self-care, family, work. I will tell you often <laughs> it is God, self-care, work, family. So I definitely have about uh, a, I'm breaking, <laughs> look, I tend to, to break the work family uh, because I just simply love what I do. With that being said, I know that I need to date my husband more, okay? We have our first quarter dates on the calendar. We have our, look, I have them on the calendar so that I can make sure that I get my butt on a plane and get home in time for the date. Because what I can tell you right now, if I don't make it to date night on time, it's going to be hell for Marky to have to pay. I just want you to be clear about that, right? And do, thank you, due to the grace of God, okay? I've always made it to date night, but I've also almost made a lot of mistakes about trying to get my butt home in time. Um, and so it has to be on the calendar. That would be first. The next thing is creating your content in bulk. Or if you're not doing bulk creation where you set aside one to three hours in an off-peak time, I'm going to reference that again, in an off-peak time, you're likely not going to have content to be consistent with. So that would be two. Taking, I do a lot of things on Sundays, Sunday afternoon, when the phone isn't ringing, when everybody else in my house wants to do something like my husband, he wants to watch football. Austin is with his gaming buddies online. That means they're not paying me any attention. Good. Now I can sit down and create multiple pieces of content, all right? The next thing in being consistent, because it's not just one thing, so it needs to be on your calendar. You want to bulk create. What you want to think about is content that you can repurpose easily. There is a new AI social media scheduling platform. That, and I did buy it. It is lately. So, you know, I, I believe in free, but sometimes you got to spend a little bit of money. Um, lately, AI. So if we're always talking about video. You can take your video and turn it into uh, a, a blog post. You can turn it into a caption with a photo. It can extract a video at the peak time of the video. So let's say you did a five-minute video. It can take 60 seconds 
of uh, the best content from that video and schedule it on your behalf. So that platform is lately, and I'm going to come post that. And I probably have some people that are over on uh, Facebook that I need to also come and drop this down. In. So let me post this here. Post. I like the off. Oh, you got to do the off peak time. I mean, if not, you don't want to take your Monday through Friday, you know, when I'm talking about do your eight by eight and then try to think you're going to create content. No, don't do that. Think about that off peak time. Um, and when I'm thinking off peak time, I'm also thinking family time. So some of you know that every single Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., I'm not available. That is family television night. We are going to watch Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, and Chicago PD. And if I'm not in Chicago on Wednesday night, they're going to wait. And then we're going to do it either Saturday morning after the call, or we'll do it Saturday evening. This week, guess what? <laughs> there weren't any new episodes, okay? So my Wednesday night, are scheduled just to spend time watching TV with my family and no phones are allowed, okay? So you, you wanna make sure, so I wouldn't schedule a Wednesday evening, but I will schedule a Friday night because I'm not hitting these streets anymore and Sunday, just so you know. So pick that uh, off peak time. That would be three steps to being more consistent. Ooh, this one right here, baby, I had to, uh, Get myself together behind this. How do you not let fear of failure paralyze you? I'm very open. I have lost everything, not once, but twice. The first time was when I went through a bitter lawsuit mm, with my family. Uh, I was born and raised in the restaurant business. <clears throat> I thought I would only be in the restaurant business. I have an undergrad degree in hospitality management. My grandfather then uh, paid for half of my grad school tuition. So I have an MBA degree in management. With that being said, I was lost. I instantly came into real estate. I went from a salary to a commission and I was not prepared to leave. When they served me papers for suing me because I owned the trademark right for Lamb's Barbecue, I left within 30 days. Have I felt like they were trying to shackle me? And what Marky wasn't going to do was be shackled. I stepped out on faith. I left. Uh, I essentially lost everything and then had to rebuild. It took me two years to realize they had done me a favor. I'm so thankful that my father's sister sued me. She freed me. The next time, so I rebuilt everything. The next time was 2006. So I lost everything again when a foreclosure crisis occurred, but my loss started before the foreclosure crisis. In 2006, um, let me start this. In March of 2006, my grandfather died from Alzheimer's disease and he actually died the day that we went to the hospital to place him in hospice, okay? And I was his power of attorney. Within 30 days, I had my third bout of pneumonia, covered 70% of my left lung, and my doctor wanted to hospitalize me. Now, mind you, my mother and Stephen was telling the doctor to hospitalize me because they knew that I was not going to follow his rules. They ain't up some dirty dogs, right? <laughs> So I had to lie to them to tell them I would adhere to the rules so that they wouldn't talk to Dr. and hospitalize me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, mm, mm, mm. Uh, roughly a month and a half later, my mother died uh, because she had a brain aneurysm and was in a vegetated state. And I was clear that wasn't what she wanted. Within uh, two weeks of my mother passing away, I get married. I eloped. Uh, within 30 days of me marrying Stephen, we get pregnant. Within 90 days of me getting uh, pregnant, I faint on an airplane. And at this point, I, I'm going to see a psychiatrist, right, at the University of Chicago. And when I went to go see the psychiatrist, he was like, you know what? 
he was like, you don't need to see me. And he was like, and I'm not giving you any medicine anyway, because you're pregnant. He says, but I do believe that you need to go and see a, a, a grief counselor, maybe identify a community group or an organization in your church. He says, because you have experienced tremendous loss, but you still have hope. And I was like, OK. He was like, so you're not depressed. He said, but I do believe that you're grieving. I was like, OK. So I never mentally connected to the loss until 2012. I know that sounds crazy. And all I knew was I needed to keep going for my children. And I knew that I needed, I wanted to be happy in giving birth to uh, Austin um, and that I didn't want him to be traumatized from the feelings that I was feeling as a result of the grief. So I will tell you, I'm getting to your question, but I wanted to just kind of let you understand. So I was talking to Wayne Bill. Some of you might know him as the sustainability guy. He just built a new construction home from the ground up. It's 100% green. I mean, I just absolutely love what Wayne has done. Wayne and I went through that foreclosure crisis together. We were both at Keller Williams at the time. And one thing that Wayne and I have discussed is the fact that we were both suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome, from the loss of everything that paralyzed us from being as aggressive moving forward, okay? So honestly, I am just getting back to who I was before the foreclosure crisis occurred because I never wanted to have to financially bear that burden again. So before there was a, a sense of freedom that came, right? Now, every step has been a very calculated step and fear of losing everything again. Cause I can't do it. I don't know if I can live it through it a third time. Like them comebacks, maybe them comebacks be, ooh, they be on fire. But I'm really getting old guys. So I don't want to put myself through that anymore. And so what is uh, the best way one thing that I think Wayne has done and I have done, and even though we aren't making those, we weren't making those quantum leaps, right? And those, those big strides as we once were, we still continue to move. No matter how small the step is, we still continued to move. We still continue to take a class. Now, we might not have been able to get on a plane at the time and go out to California or New York to take a class. We might have had to take an online class or a local class, but we still took a class, okay? What we did not do was allow it to, you know how when a person, a person can be paralyzed, but they still have motion? We still had motion. Something was still moving. And what was still moving, we continued to move it. Do not become completely paralyzed. Move what you can move. The second thing, when I talk about having the faith of a mustard seed, um, as things continue to get better, I'm actually finding myself in more prayer because I know what not better looks like. Okay, um, And so I honestly believe through books like The Tipping Point that I'm attracting more because I'm more grateful the farther I get from where I was, okay? Um, and so take some motion. And it might not be the big grand dosy thing that you think it should be, right? But it's still what you can do at this time because what you don't want to do, right, is essentially freeze up. Then you have to unthaw. It just delays the process. Even with going to physical therapy, right? There are people who don't go to physical therapy and their rehab is substantially worse. There are people who work through that pain and their rehab is quicker. The reason after last year, taking uh, 94 days, all three surgeries in 65 days that I was able to pop right back because people would laugh and they were like, when you said go back to work, you meant you was coming really back to work. I said, oh yeah, most definitely. Because what people didn't see in that 90. 94 day period of time, I was in physical therapy two times a week. I'm going to see the physical therapist. I'm having 
specialty massages, right? I'm changing my diet. I'm making sure that I get my eight hours of sleep every night. So all of that work, I was still moving in the midst of the pain because I didn't want to become paralyzed. Um, oh, Lord. Okay, let me take a deep breath. We're going to keep it moving here. Um, have had my coach for two months now. Her contract is only three months, and I definitely feel lukewarm about her. Not seeing as much of the ROI uh, yet. And so what I would like to know, when you're hiring a coach, let me just keep reading this, not seeing much of an ROI yet, but not sure if it's too short of a time frame to see if her coaching is effective. How do I know when to part ways? What are some indicators to know to keep her or not to keep her? Is there a one-on-one coaching company that you like over others really trying to level up this year? Um, So what I will say is go back to your coach and ask your coach, when were you supposed to receive a return on on, uh, your investment or a return on your time invested? That would be first, because if they're telling you um, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, right? And they will tell you how long it'll take. Um, then you might not be allocating enough time. But I want to kind of take you back on a journey. I invest, I've been investing in podcasts. Uh, now I'm at 130 plus episodes, right? It took me a year of podcasting to see a return. And the more that I do it, what we're in year four now, the bigger the return becomes. And so what I've noticed, even in recruiting agents to the franchise that I'm affiliated with, I'm now at the point of earning about $60,000 per year in my residual income. It was, it so last year was 50, this year was 60. It continues to grow, right? But it started out as zero, okay? So, Over time, I'm making more, which then means that every single year, the average return grows. So I want you to go back, ask how long did they anticipate? I will tell you sometimes it takes a year. I've had numerous things that have taken a year, but I gave it a year. So when I sat down to allocate the budget, I gave a year. And I wanted to see what I was going to have at the end of that year. But let me... Mm, you're gonna tell y'all my dang on this. Ooh, okay. Let me let me clear the space for telling this story. My very first book, <clears throat> I spent twelve thousand five hundred dollars to have a ghostwriter. They did everything. They got me to be an international best-selling author within fourteen days. Here's what's crazy. I recuperated the twelve thousand five hundred dollars within the first 30 days of being an international best-selling author because I increased my speaking fees by 40%. So I had to, it was an investment. I paid the money up front. I learned the whole publishing process. Since then, I have self-published, uh, oh, actually 30 additional publications of which five are international bestsellers, okay? And now my speaking fee, get this, has increased even more. And so I want you to go back and think about what the long-term plan is, think with the end in mind, and then work backwards, okay? We can ready to invest a boatload of money in ads. I've done everything with no ads. We can ready, I, I, I've signed the contract. I've made the deposit. I just need you to know this. And I need, she gets all, she got excited. uh, Was it Tuesday, Thursday night to get a text from her? She says, Mark, there are people over here spending six, you know, six figures on ads. She says, but they're earning seven figures per year. And I, I just said, I said, girl, we're going to do this again. I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not at the spend six figure mindset. I said, but I've come a long way from zero. And if we get the returns that we're looking to get, I would be willing to invest that. I'm not willing to do, let me be clear with y'all. I'm not willing to do that today. I have a a mental commitment at the rate that I committed. I would spend 60,000, okay? But that means I I got some some humongous gains coming in, okay? 
Can I get to six figures? Yeah. Now, let me be clear. Six figures in one year, okay, when you was at zero, baby, by that, I'm working through it. I just need y'all to know that. I'm working through it. Um, give it more time, but go back to what was your initial goal? Ask what are realistic expectations because you might not be giving it uh, enough time. That was a good question. Uh, come back here. What? Uh-oh, here we go. Y'all, y'all be getting all my business. Sometimes when I publish our group coaching as a um, <laughs> as a podcast, I say to myself, girl, did you just tell all your business like that? Right, because I tell you all things I don't tell other people. So if I decide to um, publish one of the episodes, I'm thinking to myself, girl, you told all the business. I don't know if I want everybody knowing it like that, but here it is. Uh, what faith-based things do you tell yourself to not be so critical and down on yourself? This business can really put you through a ringer and make you feel deflated, especially in slower production months. So let me go. Uh, I'm going to answer the question and then I'm going to uh, tell you a couple of things. I often go back to the fact that I am a fifth generation entrepreneur. So there was a certain person, my mother and my grandfather, that I've seen work through hard times and how they dealt with it. My mother was one of the most optimistic people I've ever known in my life. My mother believed that you should have the faith of a mustard seed. And my mother was down for whatever I thought I wanted to do. So I had taken a job at Pfizer Pharmaceuticals while in real estate. And I worked at Pfizer two years. I hated pharmaceutical sales, okay? And I don't use that word hate a lot, but I hated pharmaceutical sales. So instantly, I'm, I'm praying to God because I did not want to appear to be ungrateful for my six-figure job, my company car, and my American Express account that I could spend up to $45,000 per year on. And if I overspent, I could come back to my district to get more money because I was number one in Zoloft sales. My mother told me, Marky, just like you got that job with no pharmaceutical sales experience, you can always go back and get another job. If real estate is what you're passionate about doing, do it. Okay? So that would be first. When I think about faith-based, I made Stephen go to Whole Foods to get me one scoop of organic mustard seeds, okay? So I keep a mustard seed, this one over in my bag with me at all times. I have a bag at home. Steven tells me, girl, do you know how much these organic mustard seeds cost? He was like, I could have scooped you some up under my neck. So you mean to tell me, you think I want you to go to Whole Foods to get organic mustard seeds, to steal me a few seeds. Baby, you messing up my whole program over here. Absolutely not. But I mean my mustard seeds, okay? But a couple of things. The faith of the mustard seed, keeping the seeds with me at all times. I use the Jesus Calling app every day, okay? Not only do I have the book, a member of our group bought me the book, I also have the app on my mobile device and every single morning I am receiving, I'm going over here right now to uh, trash because I read it every single morning and Jesus calling daily. Today it says, one of our chief purposes in life is to glorify me. I crown you with glory so that you can reflect my glory, lightening up this dark world and helping others come to know me, okay? Every day, every single day. Some of you know that in the past 60 days, I read the book, You Square is really you to the second power. It is about realizing that you do not have to have incremental growth, that you can have quantum leaps. I'm telling y'all, I'm having quantum leaps right now. The next thing, after I read that, I then read 
the book, The Magic, Giving Thanks. And through giving thanks, you're consistently attracting to you. Now, I will tell you, my thankful practice started with The Secret back in 2006. So I was giving thanks and working on my attitude while in the midst of losing everything. Okay. So I watched the movie, The Secret, every year. I just read the book, The Magic. And before reading the book, The Magic, and the book, The Magic, is actually a 28-day daily practice. I read the book, uh, You Square. Okay. These are some things that you have to be consistent with the practice. Now, let me tell you about this quantum leap and giving thanks. What I'm clear about right now is people are speaking my name in rooms I'm not in. I don't have access to, it's above my pay grade. On Tuesday, the press release will go out for me being the new podcast host of Drive with NAR, the podcast for Ultra Magazine. I didn't submit for that opportunity. That opportunity was presented to me, okay? I don't even know, I don't even know how it came up. Let me be clear. The next thing, not only am I appointed federal political coordinator, I get probably one of the most visible freshman congressmen in the country. Jesse Jackson's son, his daddy ran for president. I got people sending me pictures of Jonathan Jackson on the floor talking about why is your congressman out here networking with everybody like he's been there before? Because he has, okay? Um, and then today I get an email. Not only can I be the federal political coordinator, I can keep my state legislative contact position. Am I going to keep it? Yes, because the districts overlap and line up with one another. And I said to myself, I wasn't doing nothing else, okay? So through all these practices of gratitude, of new art, oh, I said on the uh, advisory board for two prop tech companies. And one of them is in the AI space. They asked me to do that before I decided that I wanted to be involved in AI. I was still getting my head wrapped around it. Now it's all, look, it's all lined up. Everything is in alignment, but it's because I was doing these daily practices first. So Jesus Calling, app is free. Read the book uh, U Squared because it's the simplest read you're going to have. <laughs> it's the simplest reading uh, Who Moved My Cheese, right? And then um, the next thing is going to be watch the movie The Secret and read the book The Magic. And keep in mind, um, the U Squared book you can read in a day, but I would say take seven days to read it so that you can internalize it. Right after coming out of that, go into The Magic. That's going to be a 28-day practice. So give yourself another 60-day practice. And I'm going to come back to this. In order for me to successfully stay in real estate, in losing everything, I, I exhausted everything, okay? That means that at the time, the price of gold was expensive. I had jewelry from the time I was three years old. Everything that I did not think I would ever wear again, I went and I'm not going to say I hopped it. I sold my gold. Um, I will tell you right now, most, most of the pieces that I gave away, I don't even remember what it is. OK, so that means that I wasn't supposed to keep it. OK, there's no not one piece of jewelry that I went and sold that I'm harboring over. The next thing that I did, I have been insured since the age of 21. I took a policy that my grandmother had on me. And I converted it at the time of 21 to a substantially bigger policy before I had children because my thought process was if I died, I wanted my mama to have money to go and do whatever she wanted to do because I knew she would never be the same if something happened to me. Okay? So I had insurance before I had children because I wanted to make sure that I did right by my mother. With that being said, I went and took had to pull every dime of cash, baby, out of every last one of them life insurance. After my life insurance policy and Skyler's life insurance policy, when times got hard, I put all the money back. I built the cash back up in the policies, but I used the policies, okay? So everything, I exhausted it 
in order to just be able to make it on through, all right? When, when I understand what hardship is uh, and not having a great frame of mind. And these are just the tools that have uh, worked for me. Y'all got me feeling like we in real estate church today. Uh, <laughs> let, the, let the real estate ministry do its work. When and how did you know it was time to pivot? Oh, now y'all want to know my business. Uh, when and how did you know it was time to pivot off of production and into keynote speaking? Speaking, do you find training others to be more profitable in, in general? Mm, y'all, y'all coming with the come on today. Uh, <laughs> I told myself, and get this, in 19. 96, that I would come back into the classroom at the age of 40. So go back to the 90s. In 1993, when I graduated from undergrad, I started teaching for Chicago Public Schools. I taught a second grade ESEA class. I love children. I do not like their parents. Okay. So I left teaching Chicago Public Schools. Kenny Kerr, who was my principal, even if I see her till this day, she'd be like, Mark, it left me because I really wasn't there to teach her students. They took me from a day-to-day uh, -day sub and made me a full-time provisional sub because I was the third teacher for the second grade classroom that was disrupting the entire building. I was there for classroom management. Once I hit that, sec once I hit that classroom, baby, that class was never disruptive again up in that building because what you're not going to do is act a fool. Um, and so I came in to quiet her bill. I'm clear about what my purpose was at Bond Elementary School. Anyway, um, I realized that uh, parents, I was more vested in the children than the parents were, and I didn't have a parent partner, right, for their children. So I knew I wanted to teach on a collegiate level. I taught on the collegiate level starting at the age of 25, and quickly I realized I didn't have any real world experience and that I would be more effective as a teacher once I learned some things myself. So I had made a commitment to come back into the classroom at the age of 40. The opportunity presented itself at the age of 36 when my mentor, Frank Williams, told me to become a speaker. When I be, But I started as an instructor. So I I'm, I'm, was juggling a lot of things, okay? From 2006 to 2012. Some of y'all heard me say this. In 2012, my money was funny, still funny, right? My energy was zapped, and I did not have enough time to date Steve. Maybe Stephen got his dates lined up for the first quarter. That's how, that's how things have changed. So here's what happens. I read the book, The One Thing. In that book, I went back to the period periods in my life when I made the most amount of money, number one. But I didn't just want to make money. Okay. I've, I've had access to money my entire life. So it wasn't the money part. I wanted to be happy. So I went back to a period of time. I said, Marky, when did you make the most amount of money and, and have the highest level of happiness? And in both situations, I was focused essentially on one thing. Those two times, when I was only focused on the growth of our barbecue restaurants, that 1997-98 corridor, I increased the sales at our store on 59th Street by 54% in 12 months. When I left 59th and State Street, the heart of the ghetto and nothing else around us, we were making $60,000 per month and a rundown needed to be rehabbed Initial Lamb's Barbecue that opened in 1954. Just want you to know that. $60,000. And 54% of that increase came from me. So what I was clear about when I left Lamb's, if I could make $60,000 a month on the corner of 59th and State Street, right, in Inglewood, on the south side of the city of Chicago, I could make money anywhere. That's the, that was the one thing that I was clear about. So the second time was when I only sold real estate. 2004, I did 77 closed transactions. I think 2005, I did 72 closed transactions. How do I know this? My nosy butt child went and pulled my numbers from those years, okay? And he was like, Ma, 
You didn't have an assistant or anything. He was like, I thought I knew all your customers. I said, so you thought I only sold real estate when you was out of school, right? Um, and so those were the two period of time. And so in order for me to get back to a point to make the most amount of money and have the highest level of happiness, I had to give something up. I gave up the productivity to focus on the keynote speaking, but I was not a keynote speaker. I started off as a licensed real estate instructor, became a trainer, became a speaker, became a keynote speaker. And when I think about it, the pay grade goes up, but there's a different skill set. As a keynote speaker, what I do different than a lot of people, including some of my fellow keynote speakers, I have the ability to tell a story. That means you have to develop your storytelling skills. You got to take classes on that. Um, and you need to be an authority of something. OK. And so with each title change means that I have gone and gotten some additional training. OK. But it was about, I wasn't happy. My money was funny. My energy was zapped. I didn't have enough time to date my husband. I knew what I wanted. I got the necessary training. I backed up. And when you look at uh, being a speaker, hmm, let me, uh, how can I put this? Oh, y'all, you know, this y'all being a little nosy. Let me just do this. Anytime you see me on a stage anywhere in this country, contingent upon the amount of time that I'm going to be in that room, they're going to cut me a check, minimum $5,850. Uh, max, if they want me for the full day, a full day is considered six hours, $7,500. I'm going to get that 100 times in a calendar year. And I guess you can break them numbers down, okay? If I pop into your one hour webinar, they're going to cut me from the comfort of my good home, spending in that chair, $1,500. Um, so th there you have it. Uh, so being a keynote speaker definitely uh, pays good money. I am not the highest paid speaker. Uh, one thing that we have definitely discussed is my pricing. Uh, I could probably just start at $7,500 to $10,000. Um, I'm just not there yet. I'm not, I'm not mentally there to charge that, okay? Um, I'll tell you that before I wrote those international best-selling books, it was $2,500 for a half day, three hours or less, okay? So we can get, and so that's a lot of growth from twenty from November, 2019 to now to understand what my competition is charging, knowing that I can charge that amount. And let me tell you what happened uh, last year, which is verification. I worked for a speaker's bureau last year. They were charging $15,000 for me to come in for the day. So they charged more for me than what I was willing to charge for myself. Yeah, you, 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 your eyes open up, okay? Uh, so being a, a speaker can pay substantially more. Why did I decide to focus on being a keynote speaker of, other than being a trainer? Trainers average about $50 per hour. I was not mad at $50 an hour, okay? I wasn't mad at it at all. However, you do the numbers, you can understand the difference. So there's a clear difference between $50 an hour and $1,500 an hour. That's the kind of difference between being a real estate instructor, trainer, versus being a keynote speaker. But there's different skill sets that you want to develop over time to become that keynote speaker. I don't even know if Stephen know exactly how much I make. He ain't even asked. <laughs> what a mercy. Um, how do I get the hit the ground running replay? I don't see it in the archives. The hit the ground running replay was on a standalone page that, mind you, I'm going to post this here for you guys because we are getting ready. Well, first of all, you all will have access to it. Um, but I'm going to drop this link down. We put everything on a standalone page. We're going to be changing this page as we uh, charge the public for this, but you guys will still have this. So I'm going to drop this down. Oh, thank you very much on the FPC appointment. Uh, I'm, I'm elated about that at all. And here's what is kind of interesting. Um, it's not something, I'm going to say this, it's not something that I applied for. Actually, Jonathan Jackson, his volunteers reached out to me to see how they could work with me. And that was the most feasible uh, way. And I just want to say this about gentleman Frank William. When I tell you that man has changed 
my life. Uh, Frank Williams knows how to stand back and orchestrate things in a manner that people are unaware of. He told me who I needed to call. Now, people know I don't even like talking on the telephone. When he told me to call certain people, I called them. What I didn't know when I was calling these people was that they were Jonathan's mama's best friends. They, they came from down south with the Jackson. They were on page one, get this, of his signature page and on his donation page. So they show up with me, right? And he calling them out, hey, Mrs. So-and-so, oh, hey, Mr. So-and-so, you know I saw your name on the first page, but they with me in the realtor part because they realtors too. I had to look over at Frank. I said, no, you did not <laughs> just do this for your girl. Yes, he did. He lined it all the way up. Uh, that's why I love me some Frank. If you all are ever out, you will see me go fix Frank's plate. You will see me go get his drink of choice. Because when I tell you that man is 10 toes down for your girl, Marky, he is 10 toes down. And there's some other things he's orchestrated. I can't talk about him because it's not public information yet. But he is going to ride with his girl, Marky. Uh, but thank you very much. So I just dropped that link down for uh, Hit the Ground Run It. <clears throat> you can go and watch and download everything from that page. We'll move it into the, um, the membership site. You all will always have access to it. That page, though, is going to come down uh, for the people who pay for it. Uh, will you have already put the templates in Wise Agent? The templates are already in Wise Agent. Let me say this. Wise Agent also now has built in chat GPT for you all writing your custom emails and responses. So Wise Agent is the first. Let me just make this promise and disclaimer. They're not going to be the last. I'm going to make an assumption here. Over the next 60 days, every last one of your CRMs is going to have AI chat GPT built into it, whether that's KV Core, whether that's Follow Up Boss. All of them are going to have it. Wise Agent has it in there now. Yes, the emails are in there for foreclosures and short sales. Uh, in addition, the video replays are available. I did two interviews with them. And what's kind of interesting, I got a call the other day from a good friend of mine, uh, works for an asset management company, just trying to get the pulse of what's really going on in the foreclosure short sale market. He called to refer me an REO that's not in the county that we serve. It's up in DeKalb. So I found someone in DeKalb to refer back to him. And he says that they have inventory. They haven't unleashed the inventory. So let's see what's going to come. What are your thoughts on the Ninja Selling Skill Courses and Coaching? Let me say this. Ninja Selling Skill Courses and Coaching have been around for years. Uh, a lot of great people uh, taught them. A lot of great people have come through the program. Only question I have about it, do those tactics work today? How have they implemented technology into the strategy for today? If they have not done that, then I will tell you that some of their training might be antiquated. So let me be clear. I'm not saying it is because I don't know, okay? I just want to know. I know that it's a solid program. Are they keeping up with the times and the changes? And if they are, then I would say go with it. If they haven't, then I want to know where you want to get those additional skill sets needed. Um, hey, Marky, Happy New Year. I'm a founding member. I need to update. So we'll put the information in for you all to update your credit card. That will not be a problem. I'll drop that information down. Uh, what are the best hashtags? Who are the best people to always tag? Um, the best hashtags, when you go, oh, well, one, I got some questions here. Um, you want to, which platform? You want to search your hashtags. You want to make sure that you're using community-based hashtags. So whatever community you're in, make sure that you use that city or that town. Because regardless of search, 67% of searches start with location if they're real estate based, okay? Um, do not just tag people, okay? So let me tell you what you can tag. Tag the location, 
tag the organization and tag the people. Do not just randomly tag people. I'm tagged in a lot of posts. I do not allow people to use me to promote their stuff. So if I'm not a part of the tag, I'm not sharing your tag, okay? So, and there's some people who tag me and everything and will tag me and stuff about my freaking competition, right? Uh, I'm not sharing it, okay? You can tag me if you want to, but it's um, hmm, it's inconsiderate. That's the best way I can say it, right? So tag the location, tag the people that are involved, okay? Or if you're giving a shout out. On Instagram, you go to the magnifying glass. You can just start up in the top search bar with the word real estate. And they're going to tell you how many times these hashtags have been used. Copy and paste like hashtags into a Google document and into the note taken app on your mobile device, okay? Um, I intend to begin sending happy birthday month cards to my sphere, but can't quite come up with the right wording. So let's 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 see if we can do something real quick. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm trying something. I'm being a little aggressive here. So let's go over here and see if this will work for us. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, for anything that I'm having a problem with with writing, I am definitely coming back over to uh, chat GPT, the Chrome or browse extension you can use is called Merlin, M-E-R-L-I-N. A lot of times we've been having problems logging in because the system is, uh, look, we, we, we using the system. Let's go in here and log in. Let's see if the system is loaded this morning and we go through all these steps. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna show you how to do this uh, two different ways. Come on, y'all. Okay, um, so this is what I would say. If I'm writing something for um, an older clientele, I want you to start with respectful tone, okay? So I'm gonna say write um, and engaging respectful birthday message to a client. And what did I just type over? What is this? Okay. And we're going to hit this and see what we come up with. Okay. Dear so-and-so, uh, we at, and I wouldn't probably put that in there, I would like to extend uh, my warmest birthday wishes on your birthday. As a valued client, we are grateful for your continued partnership and look forward to many more opportunities to work together. May this new year of your life bring you endless possibilities and success. So anytime you are getting stuck today, we got to use the chat. I don't want you you know, the 10, 15, 20 minutes pondering, putting something off till the next week. That is what chat GPT or AI is for. So I'm going to come over here to Google and, uh, oh, I don't see it in this, in this extension. So let me come over here. I want you to go up here to my Chrome browser. I'm not seeing Merlin on this computer. Keep in mind, I'm on my travel computer. But you can, let's come back over here to chat GPT. I am going to roll up, let's see here, instructions, using the provided web search, write a comprehensive required query. Yeah, this is this is not what I asked for, but let me scroll up a little. Uh, passive, you can see some of the things that I have been asking for. Uh, multiple subjects, oh, here we go. Write an engaging birthday message to a client, okay. We're going to come over here. I'm going to post this into a Google search. I'm going to see if my uh, browser extensions work over here. Uh, here, I'm going to search Merlin. And we're waiting for chat GPT. So what you're seeing in my Chrome browser extension is the fact that 
I have Merlin, a AI plugin, and I have ChatGPT that is over here. It's still, it hasn't processed or it's still waiting. But Merlin says, happy birthday to a special uh, client, wishing you a day filled with joy and bliss. May your year ahead be filled with more successes and satisfaction. Best wishes for a wonderful birthday celebration. Okay, let AI help you. It is a free assistant. And if you cannot gain access, because I hear it's a waiting list over on chat uh, GPT, then you can use Merlin, and let me get this link for you. You can use Merlin, which is a Chrome browser plugin that when you do a Google search will work for you. Let me drop that link down. Paste. And let me see this. Did you answer my question that quick? My phone clicked off and I logged right back in. Uh, Tina, I don't know if I answered your question. What was your question? Uh, how does Wise Agent compare to Chime? Let me say this. I don't know how Wise Agent compares to Chime. I will tell you, you the second person who has asked me that question in the past uh, 24 hours. Um, and so I've had, I have got an insider at Chime. So let me do a, a little snooping around. It might take me a week or two. It's going to take me at least two weeks. Um, to find out uh, a lot of people are using Chime. I heard that a lot of people use or like it. So I'm not sure of the differences or the similarities uh, to it. And they might already have AI built in. But I definitely think that you all should use this Merlin tool uh, for your AI. Okay. That would be a great tool for you to use. So let's see here. Talked about that. First of all, happy year. Uh, I've been paying for Facebook ads when our goal is to get someone to register. On this, um, I'm going to actually highlight this Facebook because I'm meeting with our ads person. We meet. We have a call scheduled for Tuesday. I'm going to come back and answer that. Uh, how do I find people? E oh, I am using Zoom more. How do I find people email address once registered before? I, mean, um, I would say you have to ask for it. But there is a two uh, for finding like people's email. Well, no, you should have their email address. Um, to get more information, I think it was our last month call that we talked about scraping tools. So I would say go back to our actual our call at the first of this month. Uh, one of the tools I would say to use in the AI space is going to be hunter.io for scraping email addresses uh, would be definitely a great tool for you to use. And then in our masterclass this month, we definitely talked about web scraping tools. I'll have to go find them. If not, you can go back to the masterclass from the beginning of the month to be able to find those tools. How would you suggest using AI to build a newsletter that I uh, would that would create great engagement? Um, oh, I'm gonna say this. I want you to go back also to the master class from this month. Um, when you are building a newsletter, you can actually source through AI. Oh, mm -mm, I'm going to give you a better answer. The reason I wasn't going to answer is because I've never built a newsletter. And y'all know I don't like to tell y'all to do stuff that I ain't never done before. But I got a solution for you. Uh, one, I'm going to go build a newsletter so I can tell you exactly what you need to do. But in the meantime, I believe with the free Canva account, right now, you can leverage Canva to create 20 magic documents. You will create Eight, your newsletter in Canva using the Magic Doc tool. What do I mean by that? Let's come back over here. We're going to go to Canva. Inside of Canva, on that home page. And I did I, I didn't drop the tool for y'all. Let me drop this. Hunter.io, copy. And uh, Facebook, if you didn't get these tools, I'm going to figure out how to come back and copy and paste them for you. It might be when I land in Chicago this evening. Okay. Um, we coming back over here to Canva. 
on the uh, Canva homepage, da, 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 we're going to scroll down. If you have the premium version, you have unlimited access to this. If you have the free version, I think you get 20 times to use it. You're going to come over to Docs. Inside of Docs, okay, so let's, we write a newsletter, right? Uh, one pe question people want to know about the real estate market, okay? So as this starts to populate, the magic right inside of Canva is AI. Okay, so it says the best way to start is to start. So let's say we're going to do um, mm -mm, write a 500 word article about the value uh, uh, of home ownership. Let's see what that is. And here's the question. Let me see what this plus says. Oh, guess what? I didn't use the magic right. Okay, yeah. Let's do this. Do you do copy? Let's make this a plus. Let's use magic right. Okay, let's hit enter. All right, so. We got the magic right. Tips, starting with the on, uh, starting with an outline is a great first step. I guess I should have started with an outline. And you can see it's working, uh, it's magic. And maybe I should have started with an outline. Um, oh, now I need to start with no outline. Look at here, look at here now. So you need to do a newsletter, right? Now, mind you, I ain't done this before. I hate to tell y'all to do something before I had the opportunity to do it. Um, and what I'm trying to do is change this dang on font over there. So let's, and you see it wrote me a nice little article. Let's come on over here. We're going to change this font. I don't know if that's 500 words. Uh, let's change it to four. Okay, here we go. So now we got home ownership is a valuable asset for many people and a good re and for a good reason. Home ownership can provide stability, security, and a sense of pride. So if you're going to do a newsletter. I would say, until I do it myself, go over to Canva. Do not go to newsletter templates because the magic right is only in the dots. You will then have to copy this from the magic right and then come back over and do come back up here and find you a newsletter template and you're going to copy and paste. Now, let me just be clear with you. I want you to check the article for accuracy and for spelling, okay? Don't just copy and paste. Um, this is just to kick off ideas to save you a lot of time. You can go and find other articles, things that are going on in your community and have it write you a new one. And then you can come over here and use one of these uh, free newsletter templates uh, that means they don't have the little pro sign at the bottom right hand side. And this would be here. This would actually be pr a pretty good one right here that you could use in your business. This is what I would do. Okay, guys. So uh, I'm going to go back to some of the questions at the bottom. I have to clarify with AC. They were previous questions. Uh, thank you very much, honey. We're going to do look, what we're going to do this year is we're going to leverage AI. We're going to get a higher ROI and a higher ROTI on our time. What we're going to do is use us some AI. We're going to do it scared, baby, and I'm going to hold your hand. That's all I need you to know. That's what we're doing. Okay. All I'm giving, I'm giving y'all rich auntie vibes. That's all I want to give y'all. I don't know if y'all seen my little new photos. This year, rich auntie vibes. That's what I'm trying to do. So I want everybody to go have a fabulous Saturday. Uh, AC is going to come back and listen to this call. I'm going to make sure that I make all the links available also over on Facebook. And this is streaming right now to Facebook. So you can go back and watch it. I think this was a fabulous uh, call. Y'all asked me, look, y'all getting stuff. I don't tell nobody. Look, I don't even think Stephen knows some of this stuff. So I want y'all to go and have a fabulous, fabulous Saturday and your girl heading to the airport. Next time you see me, I'll be in Chicago. Everybody have a wonderful day.